Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, January 26th, 2024, let's get into it. So I wanted to read you some of my recent posts on uh, X, which I, I honestly think I'm getting censored because <laughs> nobody ever reads any of these. But you know what, I, I, I just, you got to continue the fight, you got to do the best you can. And uh, if Elon uh, is not who he makes himself out to be, which it doesn't look like he is. I mean, if he's with uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, that Zionist, uh, I, I don't know. I, I question Elon's judgment in that manner. But uh, maybe Elon's a Zionist also. They want the total extermination of the Palestinians. Uh, uh, who knows? But uh, I will tell you this, a uh, couple of very important so I said, folks, the globalists are now coming for your backyard garden. <laughs> this was the latest, latest from Redacted. They are saying your home garden has a higher carbon footprint than an industrial farm. I'm sure you can see the illogical fallacy in this as the plants consume carbon to produce oxygen. However, the Democrats everywhere will scream for you to grow grass, not food, and how do I know this? Because I live in a Democrat HOA. <laughs> oh my God. They can't stand the thought of me growing food. I have to hide it in my backyard uh, behind the house. Uh, and even then, they come after me for growing food. So the Democrats hate food. They hate you being able to grow your own food. But I, I'm just telling you, I mean, you know, for what it's worth. So, uh, Let's keep going. Uh, and this this was one that, that came out. Uh, I was watching. Well, I was watching the battle in Yemen. And uh, it was crazy. And uh, actually, we got defeated. I mean, the United States was defeated by a bunch of hooty rebels. <laughs> and I'll get into that post later on. And I said, the one good thing I see out of it. Because we're launching missiles. We're launching cruise missiles. We're, we're, we're given. We've got more plane loads of 2,000 pound bombs going to Israel now in huge abundance to exterminate the Palestinians under the uh, warmongering Democrat uh, Biden administration. Uh, and how many do you how many weapons do you think we have? I, I, somebody said that we only have like 4,500 tomahawk cruise missiles and when you consider the fact that Russia launches 500 in a month, uh, well, I'd say we're <laughs> we're pretty hurting for weapons. But the good news is, and this is it's always got to paint things with a good picture, right? So I said the good thing I see out of the warmonger Democrats in genocide, Job, is that we are depleting the now corrupted United States Armed Forces. And I'm talking about the Pentagon. The Pentagon should be standing against everything that's taken place and obviously they're not they're just going along with the uh the warmongering democrats but the good news is is that uh, all those weapons well here i'll just go ahead and continue reading it armed forces of weapons that may someday be turned on the american people this is especially true as the biden administration admits legal illegal immigrants into the united states armed forces who have no allegiance to the constitution so understand that as we bring illegal immigrants uh, that have been shipped across from China, uh, Iran, everywhere else, uh, probably the drug cartels, into the uh, U.S. military, they're not there to, to fight foreign wars. They're there to fight you, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, and by the way, I mean, I, I don't know if you've been following along, but Texas... Oh, my God. I, it, it, it's pretty beautiful. A, a few states are lining up. Uh, they look like they're... they're they're going to use the, uh, I can't remember which amendment, I want to say 10th, uh, of the Constitution to defend their border against the federal government after the Supreme Court ruled against their ability to defend the border uh, from the invasion that's taken place under the Biden administration. The warmongering Democrats, they want to wage war on the American people. There's no doubt about it. And I uh, hope you're ready. Hope you're geared up. Hope you're and That's what I, was, I wanted to talk about, the backyard garden. It's so important. Now, let me just briefly explain what I did. Uh, it was huge, man, because that was back after I'd just broken my neck. And I was out there, and, and this is what you got to do, uh, even if you're disabled. I'd be out there uh, two, three hours a 
day, maybe tops. Coming in, sweating. It was summertime. It was brutal. Insects biting on me. And I would dig out that sandy, uh, infertile soil. And I would pack it into the back of my uh, Toyota Prius Prime because it's got that hatchback, which made it a lot easier. And I had two uh, uh, drums where I could just put all that soil in there. And I would, luckily, I have a soil place nearby. And I would just drive that soil and I would dump it. And I just dug it out, and I dug it out, and I dug it out until I was about a foot deep. Uh, and even underneath there, there were utility cables. There was uh, my sprinkler lines. You had to be real careful, so a lot of it had to be hand dug. And I replaced all that soil, and, uh, and I had my yard crew, which Mexicans. I tell you what, hardworking Mexicans. I mean, I tell you, legal Mexicans, not illegal and uh, they, I told them, I said, bring me in a yard of dirt. I didn't know how big a yard of dirt was, but they brought it in, and I replaced all that soil with fertile, and then I put worms down in there. And, I mean, it's been a huge project. You would not believe the food that grows in my backyard. So, anyway, I just, just wanted to throw that out. Uh, so, let's keep going. So, my next uh, was tweet was or, or X post was... Am I the only American see what the warmonger and Democrats are doing? We are bombing Iraq, Yemen, and soon Iran. The proxy war against Russia is lost. The Democrat madness must come to an end. And uh, that's, just, uh, that's just me. And then I, I have one last uh, post because I'm going to get into uh, uh, my, my bookmarks here in just a second. I wonder what will happen once the Ukraine-Russian war is over soon. Imagine what is left of the people in Ukraine will be very angry at the United States for using them as a proxy to die in such vast numbers. With their open borders, it might be like Ukraine revenge on America soon, just saying. And so we do have a lot of uh, displaced Ukrainians pouring across the border. And I think once they realize what we've done to their country, I think they're going to be a little pissed off. And who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Of course, we got a lot of Chinese pouring across. We got a lot of Iranians pouring across. Uh, we've we've done tremendous damage to the world, and uh, there's a lot of pissed off people uh, that are in the United States. And I don't know if they're taking orders from anybody, but they might act individually. I'm expecting some some major things to uh, to happen here in the United States. Uh, so, all right, let's get to my bookmarks real quick. Oh, there we go. Bookmarks. All bookmarks. So this is uh, OSNI T Defender, and uh, I, I keep thinking this is a government website. By the way, I bad news, man. The dog is not doing okay. And, of course, I have a dem my ex-Democrat wife. They're telling her not to let the dog get exercise uh, because it will hurt his kidneys uh, people I don't care if you if you listen to Dr. Fauci you're an idiot okay if you listen to doctors these days they're idiots there is no way on earth that exercise in any shape or fashion doesn't help okay now if you've got a, a, a knee where the cartilage is is deteriorating and, and by walking on it like an old friend of mine uh, he was just tearing that knee up every time he walked on it without getting surgery and, and doing a knee replacement. Yeah, okay, exercise in that case doesn't work. But there's the very few cases in life where exercise does not help you in some way, shape, or fashion. So she's being led astray, and hopefully I'll get the dog back. Uh, I love him very much, and, and, and I'm sorry that she's a Democrat taking advice from idiots. So Ukrainian intelligence officials have now stated that they cannot exclude the possibility the Ukrainian prisoners of war were aboard the 1176 transport aircraft with the Russian Air Force, which crashed yesterday in Belgorod region, Russia, and possibly being shot down by either Ukrainian or or Russian air defense. <laughs> this is why I know this is a government site. It wasn't Russian air defense. It was Ukrainians that shot down the plane. And, uh, boy, I tell you, I've heard different numbers. Uh, 62 uh, Ukrainian prisoners were on that plane. Uh, the Dupree, uh, I mean, evidently it's a big cargo plane. It was just like, a, you know, an F-130 or whatever that we have here in the United States. 
And uh, the debris field was awful. There was human body parts. I couldn't show you that uh, in this video. Uh, it was a terrible thing. And uh, and why why the Ukrainians shot it down with their own people on board? Who knows? Uh, it could have been that they just didn't get the message that. And but it was over um, Belarus. Right? It was over. Uh, uh, Bel I think it was over Belarus. I'm not sure. And uh, for them to shoot down their own prisoners of war it's a war crime <sighs> anyway any I, all right let's just keep going breaking finland's foreign minister alina veltonen a message to israel i will be clear israel's time for self-defense well this is actually pretty cool there's actually somebody with some sane mine in finland <laughs> i didn't know that that was possible because their government has lost their minds but cozying up to nato but let's keep going self-defense enough is enough the residents of gaza strip need a humanitarian ceasefire immediately she added that the israeli government did not do enough to protect the citizens of gaza and of course this is from megatron this is he he said the Israeli, Israeli government has not done enough to protect Gazan citizens from genocide and massacre by the Israeli army. Well, no shit. <laughs> My God, I can't believe Christians in the United States are for the extermination of the Gazan people. They gassed, the Israelis gassed their own soldiers down in the tunnels, killing three of them. Uh, and after Auschwitz, where the, all the Israeli, I mean, the Jews were gassed back in World War II. They're committing the same crimes that the Nazis did. It's beyond imagination. And the American people are going along with it. The genocide Joe is going along with it. I mean, holy shit, I watch all this and I just go like, where in the fuck are the Democrats? They're out of their gosh dang minds. If you don't think we're heading for civil war, these people are lunatics. It's just like the Nazis in Ukraine. They have to be defeated one way or another. Oh, my God. But, but Finland, I mean, my God, one person was speaking up. So let's keep going. Uh, Megatron, uh, we are leaving Iraq. The head of the Pentagon confirmed that the U.S. will start negotiations in the coming days to replace the coalition military presence in Iraq. Uh, authorities uh, with with bilateral cooperation. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure that there's a lot of countries signing on to be in cooperation with the United States. <laughs> we, we are the piranha of the world. The whole world hates the United States. Are you kidding me? But let's just keep going. As early as 2020, the Iraqi authorities demanded that all foreign troops leave the country territory immediately. Oh, well, it's 2024 now. We're still there. Well, I guess that at this point, we're trying to pull the troops out. And I'm going to get to in a moment why this may or may not be a good thing. So Megatron, the decision was made because U.S. bases are constantly attacked. I told you this was going to happen. Uh, by uh, Islamic organizations, the U.S. has weak logistics in Iraq and Syria and cannot protect its bases if Islamic organizations try to escalate. But this is a big blow to the United States and will drastically reduce its influence in the region at the expense of Iran, which is becoming more powerful and influential. Yes, yes, yes. But why are we pulling the troops out? Why do you think we're pulling the troops out of Syria and Iraq? So that we can attack Iran. The warmongering Democrats, the bloodthirsty Democrats want to attack Iran. And they know that if those troops are in Iraq and they know if those troops are in Syria, that we're going to, they're going to get destroyed once we attack Iran. So they have to get the troops out of the way. Now, think about the loss here. The Bush administration, the Republican administration built those bases on Billions and billions of dollars of U.S. tax money. And now we're just going to give it all up to the, uh, well, I guess the, the militia groups in Iraq and Syria. At, at, at U.S. taxpayer expense, those bases are better than any bases we have here in the United States. I'm going to tell you what. I saw the construction that was going on there. It was huge. We spent billions, if not trillions of dollars building these bases, and now we're going to pull our troops out just so that the warmongering Democrat 
genocidal Biden administration can bomb Iran. It's going to happen. Bet your shoots on it. All right, so let's keep going. Oh, my God. I just, boy, I, 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 I'm sorry to get so fired up. Ah, uh, Russians with attitude. Uh, this is pretty too. Today at 11.15, the Kiev regime committed a terrorist act resulting in the downing of a Russian military transport aircraft that was on a flight from um, Tchaikovsky Aerodome to Belgrade carrying Ukrainian military personnel. And we already talked about that. So, uh, let's see. Well, this is Simpliskius the thinker. Let's see. I hope these morons realize, <coughs> excuse me, that the first thing that would happen if NATO and Russia war is the satellites would come down and NATO would be fighting blind. And I, I think I think I put this up on a previous video. So okay, we're 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 pretty much done with the video. So I always try to give you, uh, you know, it's kind of like, oh well, geez. That cybersecurity guy, you talk about world politics, but what are you doing to help me? Well, I did it. I talked about having a backyard garden. Grow your own damn food, man. Think about, I mean, I've got a birdcage next to my house. I'm, I'm going to be putting a, a, a garden in there. Now, you might say, you know, how can I do it? I mean, I just don't have time. I work eight hours a day. I work, you know, 60 hours a week, an hour a day. Maybe an hour, or maybe an hour a week, two hours a week. Okay, I've been working on the project beside my house, moving eight tons of rock from one direction to another. Okay, and just today I found these uh, these uh, I don't know I guess plant circles that I can put around the plants because uh, I'm going to redo because uh, what they did was they put in this rock garden and they have a barrier all around. It's actually quite beautiful but it's been neglected for 20 years and so I have to go out there every day and I blow out the rock I spend an hour or two out there and I get filthy and I got to come in and I got to take a shower it's 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 brutal work and then I shovel the rock and of course with my broken neck I gotta you know I come in and I, and I suffer in pain but I've already finished taking out two trees and and I've got my tree crew on on order to, to trim another tree so eventually it all gets done that's what you do man you just whittle away whittle away whittle away each day and all the big stuff that just doesn't look like it could ever get done and eventually gets done and, then, and what's beautiful is once the big projects are done okay like the replacing of the soil in the back or, or digging out a bush on the side, or replacing the trees and moving eight tons of rock back and forth. That's 16 tons of rock that I've managed to move in the last, well, it's taken me four months. Four months, okay? It, was it easy? No. And, and do I want to do it? No. I, I sit here and I just go, like, oh, damn, I don't want to go out there, man. <laughs> I just don't want to. I don't want to do it. And of course, I got to wait for the weather. You know, to, for everything to be dry, because you, you don't want to be moving rock when it's wet. I'm just telling you, eventually, it'll all get done. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down.